Hello, I'm Graham Priest, back again, and uh, this is the seventh of uh, eight short talks that we're doing on Buddhism and its connection with science. So let's start by reviewing where we've been so far. In the first two talks, I told you a little bit about the development of Buddhism and its philosophy. And then in the second talk, I told you some of the basic ideas of Buddhist thought, the Four Noble Truths. Then in the next two talks, we looked at uh, some of the connections between Buddhism and science in virtue of the fact that it's uh, atheist, there's no God, and it denies the existence of a self. Then in the last two lectures, uh, we changed tack and I've talked about logic. I talked about two principles of logic uh, that are very traditional in the West, that is excluded middle and non-contradiction. And we saw that um, the Chattrishkoti, of Buddhist philosophy runs counter to these two principles. So that's where we've been so far. In the last two talks, I want to change tack again. Uh, and I want to talk about the Buddhist conception of emptiness. And I want to talk about quantum mechanics. Now, uh, warning. Uh, the content of these two talks, uh, at least the connection between emptiness and quantum mechanics, is much, much more speculative than anything I've talked about so far. So uh, just, just bear that in mind. All right, so in this talk, I want to describe the Buddhist conception of emptiness. And then in the next talk, we'll move to quantum mechanics and eventually we'll see the connection that I have in mind. All right, so emptiness. As I told you in the first lecture, um, there's an, a major change that comes over Buddhism around the turn of the Common Era. A whole new class of sutras emerge, the Pranayaparamita Sutras, and these inaugurate the development of a later kind of Buddhism, Mahayana Buddhism, the greater vehicle. And uh, the central metaphysical concept of Mahayana Buddhism is emptiness. Uh, the Sanskrit is shunyata. So shunya means empty, shunyata, emptiness. All right. And the central claim of Mahayana Buddhism, uh, especially the Madhyamaka stream, recall that's, that's one of the two major streams of Indian Mahayana. The central claim is that everything is empty. All right. Now, what does that mean? Well, um, some people think it means nothing exists. This is not true, okay? Emptiness is not non-existence. Emptiness is a certain kind of existence. All right, so what is it to be empty? Well, if you're empty, you're empty of something, okay? My glass is empty of wine, okay? So when the Buddhists, the later Mark Buddhists, say everything is empty. What, what are things empty of? And the answer is they are empty of um, intrinsic nature. So the Sanskrit word is svabhava, self-being. So nothing is what it is in and of itself. Everything is what it is dependent on other things. Okay, so that's kind of abstract, right? So let me give you some examples to help you see what this means. Come back to the self again. Um, okay, what does it mean to be Graham Priest? Well, uh, what it does not mean is that um, Graham Priest is characterized by a self, something which is intrinsically self-defining. Uh, there's no self, so it can't be that. So what does it mean to be Graham Priest? Well, roughly, what it means to be Graham Priest is to be a person who was born in post-war London, who went to such and such a school, whose parents were Laura and George, who became a philosopher, who had uh, children, Marcus and Annika, and so on, and will die in due course. Okay, so notice that to be Grand Priest is to be those things, okay? Any, anything that satisfied those conditions that bore the relationship to the date of my birth, to my parents, to my kids, and so on, would be Graham Priest. Graham Priest is not some kind of ding and zich lurking behind all these things. To be Graham Priest is to be essentially related to all those other things. Okay, so that's persons. But the Mahayana claim is that everything is empty. Everything is what it is only by relating to other things. So let's take a couple more examples. The opera, Madame Butterfly. 
What is it to be the opera Bad and Butterfly? Well, it's to have been written by Puccini, it's to be set in Nagasaki, it's to be about a, a tragic woman who's exploited by an American uh, naval officer, it's to have uh, some beautiful music, it contains various notes, okay, and it has a, a tragic, tragic finale. That's Madame Butterfly. So Madame Butterfly, again, is not some D and Zich behind all these things. To be Madame Butterfly is exactly to be related to those things and others in the way I've explained. Okay, one final example, a little bit more abstract. What is space? And to keep things simple, let's just suppose space is Newtonian. What is space? Well, it's uh, to be the sort of thing which is the locus of objects, events. It's to be infinite through uh, all space. It's to exist through all time and so on. So to be space is to be exactly that thing, to the sort of thing that uh, is the locus of objects and events, etc., etc. If, hmm, if space were grey and had a trunk and roamed the plains of Africa or the, the uh, enclosures of some zoo, it wouldn't be space, would it? I don't think I need to tell you what it would be. Okay, so what we've done, what I've done is give you some illustrations of what emptiness is. Emptiness is the claim that nothing has intrinsic nature. Everything is what it is, only in relationship to other things. That is emptiness. And the Mahayana claim is that everything is empty. Okay. Now, um, there's one more thing I want to tell you about emptiness before I finish. Um, what I've just told you is that uh, in Mahayana Buddhism, everything is what it is by relating to other things, some other things. Okay? So I am what I am by relating to my parents and so on. Just some other things. Now, there is one kind of Mahayana Buddhism which goes further than this. So remember, in the first lecture, we talked a little bit about Chinese Buddhism, and we talked about uh, uh, some of the different schools of Chinese Buddhism. Well, I want to talk more about one of these. It's called Huayen Buddhism, and the name doesn't actually mean much. It means a flower garland. Um, that's because this kind of Buddhism is named after a sutra, called the Flower Garland Sutra. So it's the sutra that this school of Buddhism takes to be uh, the most important, but uh, that the name of the sutra is not terribly important. What is important about Huayan Buddhism is that uh, it takes this claim that everything is empty and it kind of universalizes. So um, earlier Indian Buddhism says that everything is what it is by relating to some other things. Huayen Buddhism says that everything is what it is by relating to all other things. So even the things which you might think are not relevant to my identity, such as a flower blooming, blooming in the central Australian desert, is in fact, if you take the Huayen picture, relevant to my identity. Now, this is kind of a highly counterintuitive view, um, but the Huayen had reasons for universalizing in this way. Now, to explain exactly why would take a whole nother lecture, so I'm not gonna do that, but let me give you just a rough idea. So, um, in Buddhism, there's an ultimate reality. In Chinese philosophy, Chinese Buddhism, it's often called Buddha nature or something like that. And everything depends on this ultimate reality. But ultimate reality is as empty as anything else, and it depends on the other things. So you get this kind of symmetric relationship between, say, me and Buddha nature, and between Buddha nature and a flower blossoming in the central Australian desert. Okay, well, if I depend on Buddha nature, Buddha nature depends on the flower, then I depend on the flower, and of course, vice versa. So, as I say, there's a lot more to be said about that story, but you can see why, given the other bits of uh, philosophy, such as Buddha nature, you might come to the final conclusion that everything depends on everything else for what it is. Okay, but let's think more carefully 
about this view that everything depends for what it is on everything else. So A depends on B. B depends on A. Hmm? Okay. So A depends on B, but B depends on A. So A depends on B depending on A, and B depends on A depending on B. Look, maybe you did this when you were a kid. You get two mirrors, right? And you put them face to face. And you kind of sneak a look. And when you look in this mirror here, you see this mirror. But of course, you see this mirror reflecting this mirror, which is reflecting this mirror, and so on, all the way down. You get this infinite nesting of mirrors, at least in principle, okay? So you get this picture whereby each mirror reflects each other mirror, reflecting each other mirror to infinity, okay? So because of this symmetric dependence, everything is going to be like this. All right, so in Huayen, there is an absolutely beautiful metaphor that is used to describe this situation. I've put up a picture on the screen so you can see it. It's called the net of Indra. And it, the metaphor is this. Indra is uh, an Indian god and a very powerful one. And uh, Indra has spread a net through space. And at every joint in the net, Indra has put a brightly polished jewel. So if you look at one jewel, then it reflects every other jewel but it reflects every other jewel reflecting every other jewel, and so on to infinity. So it's just like the mirrors, except that now it's everything in the whole cosmos. The, the jewels are the kind of uh, metaphor for the objects of reality, uh, and their interreflection is a kind of metaphor for the fact that each encodes all the others, uh, and thereby its, its nature, its being, is dependent on all other things. Well, as I say, uh, this is uh, the Huayen view of emptiness. Uh, everything depends on everything else. Okay, so uh, that's enough today. I've described to you uh, the notion of emptiness. For something to be empty is for it to, to, its nature to be dependent on some other things, and in the Huayen version, to be dependent ultimately on all other things. Now, um, Maybe the connection between that and quantum mechanics uh, will start to become evident, uh, but maybe not. Anyway, we'll turn to quantum mechanics and the connections with emptiness uh, in the next talk.